Hi team, welcome to the walkthrough for the practice test for unit four relations. Okay, so uh, the first thing is being able to interpret graphs of linear and nonlinear relations, mostly linear relations. So let's take a look at uh, uh, the types of questions that we're going to have. Here is um, the Venka and Juan, they're scuba diving, and this graph represents how far they are uh, going underneath the water and over how much time in minutes. So they're moving actually pretty slow. And so uh, let's get some space. Oh my goodness, this is so messy. There. Uh, there. All right, so first thing that I notice is we wanna know who swims faster initially. And actually, if I look at this, this line here is uh, Juan, and he is descending. He's going down distance from the surface a lot faster than Navenka is. See, Navenka, this is her line. Zach McLean, please report to the office to get your coat. Zach McLean. So um, the slope of this line is much higher, so they're going faster. The rate of change is the slope of the line, and that tells you the speed. So this is more slopey, so they're going faster. How many minutes does Juan stay underwater, and how deep does he go? Well, the dotted line is Juan. This is the deepest that he goes, and that's the point uh, four minutes, 16 meters down. So he goes 16 meters down. How long is he underwater? He goes underwater here, and he only comes up there. So he's underwater for 25 minutes. This long, everyone. Okay. What are both divers doing 10 minutes after they begin their dive? So they both begin their dive here, and this is 10 minutes after. What are they both doing? We go up here and we find out what they're doing. Okay, Nevenka has just reached her maximum depth, and she turns around and comes back to the surface at 10, 10 minutes. So that's her turning point. Juan is coming back up at a slow speed. He's coming back up to the surface here. Okay. How fast does Nevenka swim? between such and such meters and such and such meters. Well, let's go take a look at that. Um, we are asking about uh, between 10 and 15 minutes. How fast does she swim? So let's take a look at that. Okay, so, okay, there we go. So uh, between 10 minutes here and 15 minutes, this time she goes from the point uh, 10, 15, that's 10 in the x, 15 in the y, to uh, 15, 0. And her speed is going to be distance traveled divided by time elapsed. So I can see that uh, I can use my formula for slope here because slope gives me the speed, gives me the rate of change. Or I could just tell you, well, she travels 15 meters. She goes from 15 to 0. So that's 15 meters in how long? 5 seconds. 10 to 15? is five, sorry, minutes, five minutes. So 15 meters over five minutes gives me three meters per minute. So I would say, uh, if I had to answer that question, which I do, because I'm doing the walkthrough test for you, I would say she travels at three meters per minute. Now, here we go. Luigi and Mario racing in Mario and Mario Kart on Ribbon Road. Okay. Now, we know that Luigi starts the race at his cart's top speed, and Mario starts the race from a full stop, but his cart has a higher top speed. So, which line represents Luigi and which line represents Mario? Well, here is someone who started at their top speed and just continues at a constant speed. That speed is constant. The slope is constant. It's a line. That's Luigi. Here's Mario. He starts at a stop, but then he accelerates and starts going faster, 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 until he reaches his top speed and then also travels as a line there. And then they cross each other here. Okay, so the solid line represents Luigi, dashed line represents Mario. When will one racer pass the other? Well, Mario will pass Luigi at this point. You see, that's when they've traveled the same distance after the same time. That's when they're at the same place at the same time. It takes 15 seconds for that to happen, and they will have gone 20 meters. 
You just got to interpret what your Y is meaning, what your X is meaning, and that's what this point means. Yeah. So let's keep going. Uh, we're going to race her past the other, and how far from the start they be. What is Mario's average speed between the start of the race and the moment he and Luigi are next to one another? Let's find that out. Okay. So average speed is just distance traveled divided by time it takes you to travel that far. So here's the moment where he passes Luigi. He has traveled 20 meters, and it's taken him 15 seconds. So his average speed between the start of the race and the moment he and Luigi are next to one another is 20 meters divided by 15 seconds, which is equal to 4 thirds meters per second. So 1.33333 meters per second is his average speed. What's Luigi's top speed in meters per second? Actually, it's the same. Why? Because here, look, he goes from 0, 0 to 20, sorry, to 1520. This here is the point 1520, uh, 15 in the x, 20 in the y. I find the rise over run, that's his speed. It's the same as Mario's average speed there. Okay. Which racer do you think will win? Okay, many people told me Mario will win today. That's because they think Mario has a higher top speed, okay? And so he's going to, if we continue the race going this way, you see Mario's lead is only going to grow as Luigi continues growing, going a little slower. So see this gap between them is only going to get bigger. And that's good thinking. That would get you all the points. But they're all wrong because clearly Rosalina is going to win this race because she's going to pick up a bullet bill power up and punch both of them off the racetrack. Make it up. Okay, there's no right answer. All right, next we have two topics. You want to be able to find the equation of lines in slope intercept form from tables or graphs and evaluate the values of x and y in different lines using tables, graphs, or equations. Okay, so here you've been asked to find the equation of the relationship here between x and y and then fill in the missing x and y values. So I would work from these two points because okay? they're close together. It's going to make it a little easier, but you could also use this point and it should work. If it doesn't work, it's not a line. Now here, or you made a mistake here. How much did X grow? X grew by two. How much did Y grow? It went from minus four to minus 10. So that's a decrease of minus six. Okay. I could graph that and it would look like this. Here is a point three, negative four. And here is the point 5, negative 10. So if I zoom in on that, make my pen a little bit finer so I can do some fine work here. Zoom, please. Come on, zoom. There we go. Okay, so then what we can see, if we draw this on here, is that we went down and then we went over. How much did we go down? We went down minus six and we went over plus two. Okay. And M, this value is equal to rise over run, which in this case is equal to negative six over two, which is always be in the habit of reducing as much as you can. This minus three is your M. Okay. Now you can also use an, a formula to find M. You don't need to draw a picture or use a table. The formula looks like this. M, or rate of change or slope, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, let's use these points here. Actually, let's use this point. We'll call this the point number one, and we'll call this the point number two. Okay, we get to choose. So this will be point one, this will be point two. So to calculate here, I take the second y value. This is my y value for a point two. So minus four, and I'm going to subtract y1. There it is, y1. So minus four minus eight over three x2 minus x1. Three minus minus one. Okay. This is equal to, let's zoom in for fun, negative four minus eight, negative 12, divided by three minus minus one. Minus a minus is plus, so that's 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 12 over 4, and you'll find if I reduce that, it's minus 3. Same answer, 
as we got here, because it doesn't matter which points we use, it doesn't matter what method we use, just matters that we get it right. Okay. So now I know this. I know that there's some line that has the following equation. Y is equal to M times X plus B. But I know M. Y is equal to negative 3 times X plus some value B. Okay. Now, let's find B. And we can use any one of these points to find it. Let's use this point here. Negative 1, 8. That's the point, negative 1, 8. Negative 1 in the X, 8 in the Y. So I'm going to use this point here. So x, y, this point, equals negative 1, 8. I'm just writing this down to show you where these numbers come from because people will say, where'd that number come from? It came from the table. <laughs> it comes from the table. So y is 8. So I'm going to take this equation and substitute in for y, 8 is equal to negative 3 times x plus some value b. Okay, 8 is equal to negative 3 times negative 1. Well, it's just 3. The negatives cancel, plus some number b. Okay, now 3 plus some number is equal to 8. Well, I happen to know that that number is 5. But I can subtract 3 from both sides. 8 minus 3 is 5, equals 3 minus 3 is 0, plus b. 5 is equal to b. So now I have all the ingredients. So then I can say y is equal to negative uh, 3x plus 5. And that circle it is the equation that we are asked to find. Now, we want to be able to fill in this table uh, with the missing values. So let's do exactly that. All right, I'm just going to write the equation here. y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. And then I'm going to input 1 for x because I want to know what's y when x is 1. y is equal to negative 3 times 1 plus 5. y is equal to negative 3 plus 5. y is 2. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Okay. How about 15? Okay. Uh, let's just put it in here. Negative 3 times 15. I'm just going to substitute that in for x. That's not negative 3 times 15 is not negative 3. It's actually negative 45. Plus 15. So when I substitute in for x 15, I get negative 3 times 15 is negative 45. Negative 45 plus 5. Why did I get a 1 there? Oh my goodness. I feel like I've confused people by trying to save time. You see, sometimes when you try and save time, folks, you lose time. So thank you for your patience. Here's the equation. y is equal to negative 3 times x plus 5. We have been told that x is equal to 15 at some point, and we want to find y. y is equal to negative 3 times 15 plus 5. Three, negative 3 times 15 is negative 45. y is equal to negative 45 plus 5. y is equal to 40. There. Negative 45 plus 5? 40. Okay, there you go. All right, next one. Question number four. Deepan is working on the following line y is equal to negative 7 over 2x plus 3 over 2. What's the slope of the line and what's the y-intercept? m is slope, so m is equal to negative 7 over 2, and b is the y-intercept, and it's equal to 3 over 2. You just want to be able to read these numbers and understand their significance for graphing. Deepan wants to find the value of y when x is 4. I'm not going to do all of them, but I'll do uh, this one and this one. And then I'll do this one, because that one confuses people for some reason. All right, so first I copy down the line. y equals negative 7 over 2x plus 3 over 2. And now I substitute in x is equal to 4. y is equal to negative 7 over 2 times 4 plus 3 over 2. Okay, And then I evaluate. I don't have enough space here to do my rough work. Maybe I'll have to give you more space on the actual test. You have lots of space on your whiteboards. Okay, negative 7 over 2 times 4. You'll find that that's negative 28 over 2. That is negative 14. I can also do that by cancel, cancel, but there's still a 2 left over there, so that's 2. Negative 7 times 2, negative 14. Negative 14 plus 1 and a half is negative 2.5. So y is equal to negative 12. 
point five because I have negative fourteen plus one and a half gives me negative twelve and a half. Okay, so that's y is equal to this. Circle it, put an arrow at it. That's your final answer. Now the value of y when x is equal to one and a half. Here I've got lots of space. Let's zoom in. First, I copy down the equation. Y is equal to negative seven over two x plus 3 over 2. Input for x, y is equal to negative 7 over 2 multiplied by 1.5 plus 3 over 2. Multiply negative 7 times 1.5 and have it over 2. That would be y is equal to 10.5, uh, negative 10.5 over 2. Check it on your calculator, that's true. Plus 3 over 2, okay? y is equal to negative 10.5 plus 3 over 2. That would be negative 7.5 over 2. And now, because this was given to me as a decimal, I'm going to give my answer as a decimal. Negative 7.5 over 2 just so happens to be y is equal to negative 3.75. Done, final answer. Okay, you can check a calculator if you don't trust me about that. Now... The value of x and y is 0. Here's all you do. You say, copy down the equation again. y is equal to negative 7 over 2x plus 3 over 2. Substitute in for y this time. 0 equals negative 7 over 2x plus 3 over 2. Let me show you in Desmos what we're doing here. Here's our line. Negative 7 over 2 multiplied by x plus 3 over 2, okay? And we are saying for what value x is y equal to 0? Oh, well, the answer is 0 0.429, Mr. Jennings. There's your answer. But that's a gross decimal. We want a clean fraction. So how do we find a clean fraction? We use algebra. And I'll show you how to do it. So I'm going to solve this equation here for x. First thing is to subtract 3 over 2 from both sides. Subtract 3 over 2 equals negative 7 over 2 times x. Okay, now I divide both sides by 2 over negative 7. Sorry, uh, I could uh, divide by negative 7 over 2. Or I can remember that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as flip and multiply. That's weird. That doesn't erase what I want. 7 over 2 x. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over negative 7. Multiply this by 2 over negative 7. Because multiplying by 2 over negative 7 is the same thing as dividing by 7 over negative 2, or, or negative 7 over 2. So here, negative 7 cancels negative 7. 2 cancels 2, because they're top and bottom. And so I have equals x over on this side. The 2 cancels the 2 and the negative cancels the negative. So x is equal to 3 over 7. If we do 3 over 7 here, let's find out what it is. 3 over 7 is equal to 0 0.42, 0 0.42857, blah, blah, blah. And we find that that's that 0 0.29. Okay? See, it's an ugly repeating decimal, but it's a very clean for fraction, 3 over 7. All right, a little bit less than half, right? 0.42. Okay, let's keep going. So now, Muhammad is considering this line that joins the points 4, 1 and negative 2, 4. So graph the line on the axes provided. So the x value of the first point is 4 and the y value is 1. So it's this point here. And then the negative 2, 4 is negative 2 in the x, 4, positive 4 in the y. So it's up here. Okay? And now we've been asked to graph this line so we're going to draw a very clean line through those points and just keep going, okay? And then we're going to keep going that way. All right, now we want to find the equation of the line in y equals mx plus b form. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to find the rise and the run first. We're going to find m first. Here is my rise and run triangle. I visualize these, and you can use these as well. It's one strategy, especially when you have a good graph to go from. This is increasing by 2, 4. This is increasing by plus 6. 
and this is decreasing by 3. Okay, so m is equal to rise over run. Get in the habit of reducing that immediately. Negative 1 half. Take out the factors 3. Okay, and now I'm going to write down y is equal to negative 1 over 2 times x plus some value b that makes this true. And then I can take one of the points and input to find out the value of b. Where does this cross the y-axis? So, and I can look at that and say it's probably 3. Let's confirm for ourselves that it's 3. So I'm going to take this point here, 4, 1. Okay? So I'm going to put in 1 for y and 4 for x. And then I'm going to add this value b to make it true. Okay? And now negative a half of 4 is negative 2. So 1 is equal to negative 2 plus some number. Well, I happen to know that if I add 3 to negative 2, I get 1. I can also add 2 to both sides to clear this out and to find that b is equal to 3. So therefore, y is equal to negative 1 over 2x plus 3. Now, what's the value of y when x is negative 4? Well, let's input it into here. A y is equal to negative 1 over 2 multiplied by 4, that's substituting in for y, plus 3. Half of 4 is 2. Negative half of 4 is negative 2. Oh, sorry, this is negative 4. I was thinking, that's strange. This is negative 4. I put the wrong value in for x. Now, negative, so half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative half of negative 4 is 2. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Y is equal to 5 here. Okay. Let's see if that's true. Here is X is negative 4. Let's go up and find, oh, there it is. Boop. Y is 5. What a surprise. Okay. Now, what's the value of X when Y is 0? Really, we're saying, when will this line cross the y-axis? I made an ugly graph. It's going to cross right there. It's based on my graph. X is going to be 6. Let's see if that's true. Let's copy the equation. Y is equal to negative 1 over 2x plus 3. 0 is y. We want to find out what x is. Is equal to negative 1 over 2 times x plus 3. Well, if I put in 6 for x, you can see it, right? Half of 6 is 3. Negative half of 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So that would do it. Okay? But if you're confused at this point, uh, uh, subtract 3 from both sides. Negative 3 is equal to negative 1 over 2x. And then multiply both sides by negative 2. Here I'm dividing by negative 2. So I multiply by negative 2 both sides to clear that. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. x equals 6. Now we've been asked, what's the equation of the line that joins the points negative 3, 1, and 3, negative 3? All right. So um, you can visualize, or you can use a table, or you can use the formula. Uh, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I would do this. I kind of do this in my head. And I say this is uh, point 2 and this is point 1. So let's get y2, which is negative 3, negative 3 minus y1 over x2, there it is, 3, minus x1, minus 3. Notice that I substituted that into brackets when I substitute it in for x1, because subtracting a negative is a common error. People will say that 3 minus 3 is 0, and it's not. It's not. Okay, so now we have this is equal to negative 4 over 3 minus minus 3, that's 6. Negative 4 over 6, well, that reduce that right away, negative 2 over 3. So there's my m. So now I know that y is equal to negative 2 over 3 multiplied by x plus some value b that makes this true. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these points. We're going to choose this one because it looks fine to work with and substitute that in. Okay, y is 1. So 1 is equal to negative 2 over 3 times 
this value for x, negative 3, plus some value b. That makes it true. Okay, so negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 over 3. So 1 is equal to 6 over 3 is 2, plus b. Now I can see if I subtract 2 from both sides, I'll get negative 1 equals b. Okay, or in other words, 2 minus 1 equals 1. Here, this line, you can, might be able to solve it there. Negative 1 equals b. Therefore, y equals negative 2 thirds times x minus 1. This is the equation of the line that will link this point and that point. Let's check in Desmos. Negative 2 thirds x minus 1. Okay, we're going to clear these lines. Negative 2 over 3x minus 1. There is that line. What were our points? Uh, we had negative 3, 1. There's negative 3, 1. And then 3, negative 3, right? There's 3, negative 3 there. Uh, there. Oh, holy pixel by pixel. Anyway, you get the idea. This is a point 3, 3 over here. Oh, my goodness. Just come on, man. <laughs> Show me the point 3, negative 3. There it is, 3, negative 3. So we've seen both points are on this line. Oh, help me. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that is correct. Now, what's the equation that joins the points negative 11, negative 8, and 6, 4? Oh, that's a level 4 problem if I've ever seen one. Okay. So I am going to do um, m is equal to change in y. So negative 8 goes up to 4. So that's plus 12 over negative 11 goes up to 6, so 17. Okay, it's 12 over 17 is m, so y is equal to 12 over 17x plus some value b. Now let's substitute this point in to see what it is, what b is anyway. 4 is y, well when y is 4, x is 6, so 12 over 17 times 6 plus b. 12 times 6 happens to be 72. 4 is equal to 72 over 17 plus some value b. Well, let's change that number 4 to some number over 17. Okay, basically, we're looking to say 4 is equal to some number over 17. Okay, so if I multiply 4 by 17, I have 4 is equal to 68 over 17. You'll find that this is true. That is 4. Just solving this type of equation. You can multiply both sides by 17. Get x is equal to 4 times 17 is 68. Okay, so uh, now what I'm going to do is write 4 in a different way here. Okay, so that's 68 over 17. And I'm going to subtract 72 over 17 from both sides. So then we get 68 minus 72, which is minus 4 over 17 is equal to b. So now we've got all the ingredients we need to say, therefore, y equals 12 over 17x minus 4 over 17. I was making a lot of mistakes early in the unit when I was doing these in my head. Now I'm not making so many mistakes. So I'm happy to see that I'm making progress on these and uh, improving. Now, these are applications of linear relations questions. So Anna and Amar are both saving money at different rates. Looks like um, after one month, that's plus one, Anna has added, hmm, plus $25 to her bank account. Cool. Here, Amar has plus one month, and he has added $20. Okay. So who's depositing more money every month? Anna. And she's depositing $25. I know because I did the work. Okay, You can write out your own answer in sentence form, please. Anna deposits $25 a month. Amar deposits $20 a month. Therefore, Anna deposits more. Who started with more money? Well, let's go back in time. we got to go back in time two months to find out how much she had before she started depositing. So that would be 85 minus two deposits. Two deposits is 50 bucks. So Anna starts at zero. 35, okay, 85 minus 50, okay. Amar starts at 
zero. We have to go back three months. So we have to take away three deposits. So let's subtract 60. He started with 50 bucks. Okay. So who started with more money? Amar. How do I know? Because I walked back that many months and figured it out. I used a table-based solution. You could use graphing. You could use equations to solve this. B would be the value. The, the y-intercept would be the initial amount of money they started with. Will they ever have the same amount of money? Why or why not? Yes, they will have the same amount of money. Uh, you could use graphing, and you could say, Mr. Jennings, could I have a piece of graph paper? And I'd gladly give you one, and you can solve this. I'm going to show you algebraic. Here is Anna's money. Anna's money equals uh, $25 per month. We're going to say that's X plus she starts with $35. Amar's money is equal to $20 per month plus 50 bucks he starts with. Right? Yeah, he starts with 50 bucks. So let's figure this out. Um, if Anna's and Amar's money is the same, then $25 times the number of months that have gone by plus 35, that's Anna's money at any month, X, is going to be equal to $20 per month plus $50. That's Amar. Subtract 20X from both sides and subtract 35 from both sides. It gives me 5X equals uh, subtract 35 is equal to 15. X is equal to 3. That's strange. That's not what some other people got. Look at this. Here, table-based solution. 3, 1, 10. 3, 1, 10. Isn't that funny? The answer is right before your eyes. Three months out of the same amount of money. Isn't that funny? Okay. Next one was a jar full of candies. My goodness. What a great, uh, great question. Okay, I'm going to talk through this one. I'm not going to answer it. A jar full of candies contains 60 candies. Each day, four candies are removed from the jar. Complete a table of values. Okay, so I am going to do this. Here is uh, the number of D days and the number of C candies. Okay, zero days, there's 60 candies. One day, there's 56 candies. Two days, there's 52 candies. Three days, there's 48 candies. You guys seeing the pattern? Four days, sorry, very sarcastic. There's a 44 candies. <gasps> Five days, there's 40 candies. Who's eating all these candies? Six days, there are 36 candies, okay? Every day I took away four candies. Sketch a graph, okay. Can I just show you the graph in Desmos? Yes, of course I can, Mr. Jennings, because I'm the teacher and I do what I want. Here's an equation that models this situation. Negative four times the number of days plus 60 initial candies is, show me that, there it is there. Here we go, this is day one, we start with 60, day zero, we start with 60 candies. After one day, we have, gosh, 56 candies. After two days, we have 52 candies, okay? And you can absolutely build these equations by saying, I start with 60 and I take away four per day. So that's using multiplication and multiply by days to find out how many to subtract. Okay, so that's how you do those. And then what other questions do we have? Identify the initial value and the rate of change. I've already talked about that. Your rate of change is negative four. Every day you remove negative, you remove four. So negative four is your rate of change. And 60 is your initial value. Creating an equation to model the number of candies. And after T days, for what values of T does your equation apply? Okay, this is a good question. For what values of t does your equation apply? Well, let's take a look. Help me uh, here. Does it make sense to talk about negative time? Not really. Like time before we start the stopwatch? Not really. How about can I have days past 15 days? Not really because I can't have negative candies. So really, t is only valid for values between 0 and 15, between these two points. Otherwise, we have like time before time began, which is weird, a weird idea and time after the candies are gone, which is uh, everyone cries and no one worries about candy anymore. Uh, okay, so now this one is graph the lines and find the point of intersection. Okay. I'm gonna graph this one first. Y is equal to negative X minus two. First thing I do is put in the minus two on the Y axis. Why do I do that? Because when uh, X equals zero, 
y equals b. y equals this value when this is 0. This is nothing. It's 0. So y equals negative 2. Can you see it now? y equals negative 2. Okay. And now let's see that again. Okay. Uh, and then I put on my slope. Here's my slope, negative 1. So I go over 1 and down 1. So there's a point. There's another point. There's another point. It's a line going down with a slope negative 1. It's all those corner points. And then it goes up and up and up and up. This is back negative 1 and up 1. Okay, so that's my line y equals negative x minus 2. Now let's graph this one. y is equal to 1 third x plus 2. Put this one on. And then 1 third is run 3, rise 1 there. And then I go, here's my line. I find that the point of intersection is here at the point negative 3, 1. Negative 3, 1 is the desired answer. Find the intersection between these lines. Mr. Davio, these lines are parallel. These lines are parallel, so there is no intersection. Let me prove it to you. Let's convert them to y equals mx plus b and find that there's no intersection between these lines. 4x plus 6y equals negative 12. Okay, I subtract 4x from both sides. 6y is equal to negative 4x minus 12. I divide both sides by 6. Okay, y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 2. That's just doing this division twice. Uh, ask me questions if you're not sure. If you're like, hey, how did you get that number? You know, send me an email and then I will say, uh, which number? And then we have a long conversation whereby you learn some math, hopefully. Now let's convert this one here with a different color. Boop, boop, back to blue. Okay, 2x plus 3y equals 6. Divide both, uh, subtract 2x from both sides. We get 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. Divide both sides by 3. We get y is equal to negative 2 thirds x uh, plus 2. Okay, now let's graph both of these lines. Here is negative 2 thirds uh, plus 2. So here is a plus 2. And then I go negative 2 thirds. So that means run 3, rise negative 2. It's there. Run 3, rise negative 2. It's there. Uh, run negative 3, rise positive 2, and it's there. And it's there. And then I put a, a line through all those points. I think that might be the straightest freehand line I've drawn today. And now let's draw, let's graph um, this one here in red. And we'll see it ain't touching. It ain't touching because it has the same slope. It has the same slope but a different value. So it's always going to be in a different spot. So because they're parallel, they don't touch. Therefore, no point of intersection. That's like saying I've eaten uh, 100 calories and you've eaten 200 calories and we're each going to eat 100 calories per hour. When will we have eaten the same amount? Never. Uh, you know, we're eating at the same rate, so I'll always have eaten more. Okay. All right, everyone. So that's how you uh, approach all these types of problems. I hope this helps you have fruitful math practice today. If you still have questions or are wondering how to build your cheat sheet, absolutely talk to me tomorrow in class or send me an email or ask a friend or a tutor and uh, catch you on the flip side. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.